What's up guys, Tech James here. In this video I'm going to be restoring my Alienware M11X R3 gaming laptop. They also call this the gaming netbook, so it is quite small, so I guess you could call it a netbook. Now I picked this thing up maybe about two to three years ago, and when I got it, it was very cheap. Keep in mind this laptop is very old, but I think we paid about 50 to 60 pounds for it, and it was pretty much in working order. However, um, as of now, I can't even use it. Um, there is quite a big problem with it. When I go ahead and power this laptop on, it basically gets stuck and it will start beeping, and the beeping sound is incredibly loud. Now I've looked online and apparently there is a simple fix to this and that is to replace the keyboard. Apparently sometimes the keyboards on these things can go wrong, keys can get stuck and they can also just short out the whole laptop. Now I know on this laptop right here all of these arrow keys are broken and they were broken when I purchased it so it's probably a good thing that I am actually going to replace the keyboard. I have already done a little bit of restoration work on this thing. I did actually put this carbon fiber sticker over the touchpad just because the touchpad was pretty like disgusting. I tried cleaning it but because it was so worn down I just ended up putting a sticker over it and it works really well. I can still you know tap and use it and it hasn't changed the touchpad at all. See I will be restoring this laptop in this video. It's also quite dirty, very dusty so I will be cleaning it as well and we will be replacing um, the keyboard and putting a brand new one in there. So here is the tool set I will be using for this video. This is just a cheap Chinese tool set that I got off Amazon. However, it is actually really good. I've used this on iPhones, Xboxes, Playstations. This tool set literally works on everything. It's very cheap. I'll leave a link to it in the description. And it pretty much has every tool that you will need for opening up small devices. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to get my Phillips head screwdriver, just one of the very small ones, and we're going to open up the laptop because we actually need to take some screws out inside in order to remove the keyboard. But before we take out the screws, let me show you guys what happens. Listen to this. When I go to power it on, it goes incredibly loud. So I'm holding the power button. If it's got enough charge in it, there you go, it will try and boot up. And then it kind of does this weird thing where it turns off again. And then it should start beeping. Maybe I have to try and power it on again. Quite a few laptops have this issue, mostly Dell ones. If you guys didn't know, Alienwares are actually Dells. Also, Lenovo laptops have this issue. So let's just try and power it on again. It seems to be struggling when powering on. And here you go guys, this is what I mean by the beeping. Um, it's very loud and it will do this over and over again. And um, as you can see, it's flashing, so it's low on battery anyway. I do need to get a new battery for this thing. Um, I will probably buy one off eBay fairly soon. The keyboard, I purchased that off Amazon, I think. And it was actually very cheap, so maybe I'll leave a link to that in the description if you guys are interested. Or maybe you have one of these at home which also needs fixing. Oh, and one more thing before I open it. I did do a little bit of restoration, not on video. I actually replaced the rubber pads because they had both fallen off, so the screen was getting a bit scratched. So I just cut out some felt and stuck it on here and that actually works very well. So let's just close the lid, let's flip it round and we're going to take out all of the screws. So we need to take out all of the screws. So we've got three screws all the way down here. We've also got three screws going across here and then we just have two at the top. So let's go ahead, let's take all of them out. Of course I'm going to speed it up on video just so the video is not boring. Alright guys, so there you go, they are all of the screws out. As soon as you've got all the screws out, you should be able to hook your nail just under the plastic clips and we should actually just be able to pull it off. And there you go, that's the bottom of the laptop completely taken off. We can just put this over to the side. So the next thing that we've got to take out is actually the battery. So the battery just sits here and there are screws surrounding it, so we're just going to go ahead and take those off right now. Now once these two screws are taken out, there's just two right here, they are Phillips screws. You can actually just use this plastic tab at the side to just kind of lift the whole battery and move it like that. Now don't completely pull it off because you don't want to pull this cable out. Um, obviously we do now, but you don't want to pull it out you know, with along the battery. So there you go, that's the battery out, very simple. Put the battery to the side, be very careful with it. And then we're going to want to take two screws out. One screw here and one screw here. Keep in mind these screws will completely come out. So you might want to put them in like a tip box or a tin or something just so you don't drop them or lose them. So 
So that's those screws to the side. It's now time to completely flip the laptop over. Don't worry, nothing should fall out. And what we're going to do is we're going to open it and we need to sort out the top hinge right here. So if you have the same um, kind of screwdriver kit as me, what I'm going to use is the tweezers. This tool works very well to take this off. And you basically just want to get in the gap here, which is next to the hinge. So we're going to get our tweezers. We are going to just put one into the gap and it should actually be able to, you know, kind of go in there a little bit. And then we're just going to clamp down on the tweezers and you just want to kind of pull this hinge up. Be roughly careful, be a bit careful, be, you know, just lift it up and it should unclip very easily. Now the other side doesn't actually have this kind of clip. So what we're going to do is we're just going to tr try and like gently pull it up and we're basically going to unclip it all the way. You might want to push the screen back a bit and there you go. If you just wobble it a little bit, and then it should actually unclip quite easily. There you go. There you go. Hand bent it or anything like that. And of course, we've got a button on here. And um, the button is actually an alien head. It's very cool. I will be cleaning this a bit later. But there you go. Now we've got access to remove these two screws right here. And these screws are for the keyboard. So again, you can use your Phillips head screwdriver. You just want to go for these two right here. And we're going to unscrew them and put them to the side. So now it's time to lift the keyboard up. It might be stuck down a bit, but you should be able to just lift it up. So it might be clipped in a bit, just wobble it a bit because there are hooks at the bottom. And then we should actually be able to turn it over. And you guys can see, this is where it plugs into the board. So we've got these tiny ribbon cables. What you do is you just lift up the bits of plastic. If you've got long nails like me, a bit easier. And then we can take out these little ribbon cables. And there you go, that's the whole keyboard removed very easily. If you guys didn't quite see, I'll put another one back in. This is what it looks like. Um, obviously, I've got a new one. To be honest, this one doesn't look too bad anyway, but I'm going to be putting a new one in because this one got broken keys on it. Hopefully, this will fix it. Brand new keyboard. I will link this keyboard in the description as well as other accessories and stuff that I will use. And there you go. That one's looking very nice. Maybe it's second hand. I don't know but it definitely looks a lot better than my previous one. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to install this. Actually, it's got a bit of dirt on it. That's a bit horrible. I don't know why they didn't clean that off. <laughs> but let's just install these ribbon cables right now. And of course, the bits of plastic should be up, so it should be very easy just to slot them in. Okay guys, that is both cables slotted in. I can't really show you because I don't want to bend them, but I think one just, oh no, that one's still slotted in. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to lay the keyboard back down and just line it up with the kind of, you know, where the screws go. So once we've put both the screws back in, I literally just did it. Now it's time to clip on the um, kind of like hinge cover. So what we're going to do, we're literally just going to put it over and literally just press it in. Um, just kind of, you know, start from this side. Just press it. It should click probably about five times. There you go, just like that. And once it's kind of all clicked in, you know you've got it in secure. So you go, that's the keyboard, it shouldn't wobble or anything like that. That's the hinge cover. Now we're going to flip it over and we can put the battery and stuff like that back in. Before we put the battery back in, obviously we've got our two screws that just go here. And then once these screws are in, all we've got left to do is simply put the battery in. So what I'd recommend doing is probably just clipping it into the port first and then just resting the battery in. And then of course we've got to add the battery screws. So I'm just going to clip it in and then just going to push this down the side and then simply just kind of clip the battery back in. That should be fairly easy. Just like that. Also make sure to push this cable back in just where the hard drive goes. There you go. Brilliant. Now we can put the battery screws in. The two battery screws are now done up. It's time to put on the bottom of the laptop. So what we're going to do, we're just going to start from the top because the tops have the clip on and we're just going to slide it into the tray just like that. Then we're just going to lay it down gently and now it's time to do up all the screws. All of the screws are done. I'm excited to see, does this actually power on without any issues? That would be really cool. Okay, so I've got my um, charger. It's got some power to it. I think I'm just going to wait about five minutes and then we'll be able to try and power it on. Obviously, the battery died when I tried the first time, so that test didn't really count. But once the battery's got a bit of power on it, we'll try and power it on and we can see if it works. So this laptop, um, you can buy these on eBay. They're still quite expensive. Uh, I guess this laptop is kind of like classic now. It's still pretty good if you want a laptop for downloading files. It's really good for that, watching movies 
it's really good. Um, Windows 10 works fine on it as well. Um, I think this did originally come with Windows 7 installed, so it is getting quite old now. But um, it's probably still better than most Windows 10 laptops that people would spend about £200 on. You know, if you go into PC World and buy a laptop from there, um, it's probably not going to be that good. Because the specs on this thing are actually pretty good. It's got an i7 in it, I think it's got about 6 gig of RAM, I can't remember the graphics card, but it does have a 250 gigabyte SSD as well. So let's just wait about 5 minutes and then we can power this thing on. So I've left it on charge for a very long time now, so I think I can probably try and power it on, and hopefully it won't start beeping. So let's power it on now and let's see what happens. Okay, so it looks like it's working. Hopefully it's going to boot up. It sometimes does this, I don't know why. And then, is it going to boot or is it going to... Oh, it looks like, there you go, it actually booted up. So hopefully this fixed the problem. Obviously I'm going to turn it off and on again a few times just to see. And as I said, I'm going to be replacing the battery anyway, because the battery on this thing is already destroyed. And uh, the time is wrong, I'm not sure. Um, actually that could be the right time but yeah the battery is definitely messed up so we'll have to fix that as well um, but hopefully this keyboard is actually working um, it doesn't seem to be glowing but it is working so maybe I can try and fix that right now okay guys so it's a couple of days after fixing my Alienware M11XR3 and um, we're basically just going to clean it obviously it's got a new keyboard so that should be okay but we're just going to clean the rest of the case and basically just make it look you know as if it was new so as you can see it's booting up well hopefully you guys can see the screen is kind of hard to see in here because of the reflection but um, yeah it is actually loading up Windows 10 and um, it should load up perfectly fine if I just bring it a bit closer you guys can see it's actually loading up okay so what we're going to do is I'm going to just turn it off again and um, then we're going to clean it if you guys are wondering about the keyboard the keyboard works perfectly fine as well there's literally no issues with it but let me just go ahead and power this off um, I got the keyboard LEDs to work I just literally reinstalled the Alienware command center software and um, that pretty much just fixed the LED problem so let's shut it down let's clean it and then I guess that's pretty much it we've pretty much fixed everything so I've just got some soapy water here and that is perfect just for cleaning the kind of like outer case of the laptop I'm just going to go over it obviously you don't want to use too much water it is a laptop you know it does use electricity so you have to be a bit careful but just go over the whole lid and we're just going to clean everything just like this and then we can also clean the sides um, I guess we can open it in a minute as well and clean the um, keyboard but yeah, I'm just going to go through the sides just clean all that Okay, so let's just clean this part as well. I'm going to use a bit of water on the touchpad and parts like that. But on the screen, what I've got here is just a basic screen cleaner spray. I've already sprayed this onto a cloth, and this is absolutely perfect for cleaning the screen of your laptops, iPads, basically any touch screen or screen for a computer. So there you go guys, completely restored Alienware laptop. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.